So I was doing a Vanguard image search for random intro guy. This freaking random Link Joker guy, like one whole episode. It's like the first, one of the first searches, be the third thing to show up. He isn't like one episode as a filler character. So, last night Bushiro posted their product stream for the last half of 2020 for the other part of the world. And there's a bunch of cool stuff that's being released. We're not going to talk about that today. Best girl. It's all a lie. This isn't even connected. I'm, this, this deck box is empty right now. I'm not even looking at anything on there. I'm just literally just Google searching tacos. Gear Chronicle. As always, today I'm gonna shout out my page on TCG Player at Sky Ridge Games. Links right there somewhere. I like to keep this box of wonders updated about once a week at least and try to update prices as much as possible. Look. Spoilers, I have a shiny Asha for sale, you, you should get that. Of course, everything on there does end up going back towards the channel, towards things that will help improve the production value and editing that I can do, towards product to open and review, towards being able to go on amusement park trips for the other half of the channel. Support, support me and support you. Check out the link below, buy some trading cards. Hey everyone, welcome back to Gear Corner, your one-stop shop for all things Gear Chronicle, where today we're finally going to be looking over the version 1.0 of Chrono Jet, Chrono Jet, Chrono Jet somewhere over there, slash the next age build. This is my, after about two weeks of initial testing, going through four locals. Uh, I've averaged going XO, X1 most of the time. Let's go ahead and stand up the Vanguard. Starting with our good bud Chrono Dran, who I just got my SP of in the mail today. Oh, look, it's, it's so beautiful. Let's show you the regular one. It was just like with the last video. There's normal boy, there he is. Mmm, so pretty. I love it. Today we're gonna go ahead and just go over the cards real quick and go, tell you some strategies. I'm not gonna go over every single effect in detail. You guys are interested in that? Check out the whichever and the doodly doo goes on, I don't know how this mirrors. But there will be a link to the whole playlist of all the breakdowns I've done of every single set. So, let's go ahead and get going. Starting off with our grade four slash three lineup. We run four next age, one phoenix, and of course four to start of the show, Chrono Dragon. For a total of four threes and five grade fours. The ways that we do this is because this is obviously our official win condition, but if you happen to go first because you can't go to him on the first turn, this is an option and I'll explain more in combos. We of course have four, four smokier dragons. In addition to that, there are also four Naboos and four Steam Sky Yerkov for a total of 12, 12 grade twos. Pretty much this is your most important card in the deck as it gives the ability to stride to anything. However, Soul is actually a pretty good resource now in this build. So Nabu is your only way to QL refill that. And this is kind of just your filler. Why would you not run this? Hey guys, Future Jared here. And while I was editing this, I noticed that right now the Vanguard community is kind of going on a little bit of a, a controversial discussion, I guess, on use, the usage of Earcob. So if you guys keep watching a little bit later, I do go over some future deck suggestions. I am currently testing out some options on it, so keep an eye out for a video later. I might do a discussion on your cob, but I can see the arguments on it, but um, I'm tired and about to sleep. Keep watching the video, like, comment, subscribe, or whatever. It's you know, back to the deck now. This card, he's so good. On the grade ones, we have three Steam Breath Dragons. Three Chrono Tooth Tiger, four Quickie Quickie Worker. I should have said that faster. And two Memene for a grand total of two, six, tw nine, twelve whole grade ones. The trigger lineup: we opt for a total of ten whole critical triggers. It doesn't matter which ones you use. I suppose it's just a matter of art. 
However, these two are important because that is the perfect guard one. And then two other perfect guards in the form of the draw trigger. And of course, four heals. The deck does have the option to go into Mount Rage's 12 critical because of the four different crits that they have access to. However, because you do want to still have a little bit of draw trick effect in case you need that actual perfect guard to stop a giant attack against some legal force deck. We still want to run a couple of these. As for what, how you want to run the deck, obviously you want to sit on your boy Crimson Dragon, who is your only grade 3 in the deck, therefore the only thing that you could ride and you can't mess up on that. The good thing about him is that not only is he a Cedar Strider, much like Chrono Fang and Lost Legend, but you also have that rearguard ability, rearguard and rearguard ability with guard restrict, which makes it so once they hit to 4 or 5 damage, everything you swing becomes lethal. Therefore you can just kind of pop them down on rearguard as well and just be like, yo dog, here we go, here we go, here we go. For that reason alone, most of your counter blasts will be dedicated to him, which is fine because otherwise the only other thing is going to is really Team Star or Air Power giving you extra drive checks. That's what he goes into. Your main card is of course going to be your next stage dragon, who gives you the ability to resand, therefore letting you have two banner attacks. However, because of his ability, you can only really use it once your opponent's at grade 3. So if you have to go first, you do have the option to go with a Phoenix, who has the simple ability of just having three drive checks. Because of the way the deck runs, you do have the option to go into either Force Marker. Force 1 will help you gain a lot of power, make your attacks more devastating, especially with the Guard Restrict. However, Force 2 is what I've tested most of the time. Essentially, if you're able to go second and go into your next stage right away, as long as you have anything else on rear guard, you essentially have three triple critical attacks, double critical attacks. As you go swing from next stage, go right back into him, and when you ride, you get another gift, so you place that on rear guard. Then you have another two and another two. If your opponent's sitting at anything above two damage at this point, this is huge, and you could easily clear away games on your first drive turn. Even if you can't do that and you have to summon Phoenix, that's still sitting on a triple drive with double critical, which is very devastating as well. In order to make your attacks more powerful and to make your strides more consistent, we're going to look at these few units. So first of all, from the new set, we have our Steam Breath Dragon and Smoker Dragon. Steam Breath Dragon is of course your grade 3 searcher, so he helps you look for your Chrono Jet Dragons. And this basically turns anything that you have into a stride fodder, so you could instantly go into your grade fours without any issue whatsoever. They both also have an addition where they get a plus five for literally no reason at all, which means that anytime you can combine these with anything, he's gonna be a 15k, this is gonna be a 13k, which alone make your numbers great, but if you could combine them, that's a free 28k swing, which is absolutely plus. Absolute plus to do this for free. Once again, if you run that on Force 2, your opponent's going to have to drop a 20k shield on a Force on pretty much any Vanguard, which of course increases even more if you do a Force 1, but at the risk of not dealing as much damage and not being as threatening. Another card that gives you this extra power is Steam Fighter Memone, and her ability lets you basically cycle out one card every time you run once per turn. Granted, if you are striding, if you are getting your grade fours out, you now have two to three times that you can do this with every turn. So you do have your option as to when you want to, since this does give you the ability to power up your board. In combo with that, since this makes everything a grade three, and her skill drops grade threes, you can actually combine these two to guarantee that she'll give you plus five power to the board every single time. Finally, we have these three kids that help you draw into cards. This will guarantee your setup some more because this It'll let you put any card you want back in. Because you're using a lot of soul now, you sometimes don't want to use her ability to put in your grade 4 units and recycle them. Instead, what you could do is actually put your triggers back in, or other key units such as Earcob and Nabu. As we said before, Earcob does count as another stride fodder kind of card, but he also gives you the ability to get more draft checks. Between this and all the other cycle cards, like that, 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 and that, you have very, 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 very easy way to draw a good 5-6 cards on your second turn onward. I think I've seen my record so far has been going about 6, 7, 8 in that order. So you're drawing this basically another starting hand every turn for free as long as you're using these kind of cards. In addition to that, this is probably one of the most important cards in the deck because like I said, you now use a lot of soul. And he's the only way Gear Chronicle has a soul charge. 
So in addition to his skills, which are great on their own, the fact that he refills your soul makes him almost essential. I guess we'll talk about Fang. This is the only Chrono Fang card you still run really good because you could ride him and get a second draw phase, and you could discard him with this to draw a card. The more I test it, the more it seems fillery. Don't get me wrong, this is great filler. Absolutely, if you can find a way for it, fantastic. But if you do have any room to flex to run any tech flex support, this might be it. Once again, for the trigger lineup, we did decide to go for about 10 critical triggers because you are drawing so much now, you don't need the draws. You have literally everything I've shown between the Tiger, uh, Smokier. By the way, Smokier draws a card. I don't know if I mentioned that. Nabu, Memone, Quickie Worker, like everything draws you cards in this deck. So you really don't need the draw triggers. Because of your restand and because you are going more than likely into Force 2, then you do want to crit them a lot. These on exchange turn can be devastating. And like I said, even if you go first with Phoenix, if they're sitting at 2 damage by that point, which is very easy to do, Force 2, a single crit, Phoenix is suddenly swinging for 3 damage. Easy. However, you do want to still run a couple of draw triggers just in case you aren't hitting those draw fix. And because even though you, the new Sentinel triggers are hit, make you hit a 43k spot on normal Chrono Jet Dragon, 43 won't always be enough for something like a mirror match or if you happen to be playing against something like a Paladin deck that can just stack up a bunch of force markers and make giant numbers. So a couple of these are still useful just in case you run into those scenarios. For future builds, there are a couple different options that I do want to try out. First of all, Isolate Lion as an alternative to your Phoenix turn. This card essentially is going to help out a lot more if you run more grade 3 units because he has the ability to not only give you a free call, which kind of evens him out over your extra drive check, but you also have the ability to call a grade 3 out of deck. This instantly gets you a Chrono Jet. Or there's a small text that you can run with that grade 3 slot such as Hollow Colossus to give you the Baldor skills your field, this to give you some extra bonuses on perfect guards, or Mr. Ballyhoo to help you search out Chrono Jet Dragon, which, while not optimal, does give you more consistency. The grade twos is not as much flex room because you really need to run those three cards. However, there are a couple options. Chrono Light kind of extends your whole plus two draw phase that you get off of the grade one Chrono thing. And it's just that you get an extra crit, which, testing this on Fang alone, you basically swing triple crit at all points in time with your Force 2 marker. Great, 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 great pressure card. There's also the Stroboscope that came out of the starter deck, which gives you some spot removal at the cost of more soul, which is the issue, because once again, I refill soul really. And two other cards I want to highlight for grade twos are Steambreaker Doodoo, who gives you the ability to power up your field. More power, just like the Momene, kind of, except and a much more free cost of her just kind of existing. And the Steam Reporter of Auburn, in case you do have to be a little bit more defensive in the future, he acts as a perfect card. The Grade 1s, because like I said, unfortunately, this fantastic card is kind of fillery. Uh, first of all, the smoke here is definitely going up to, one, going up to 4. I was trying at 3 just because I didn't think you'd always need it, but... The uh, fact of the matter is, he's a free 13k booster, which is great on his own. And I guess he also helps you get grade 3. I mean, the reason I wasn't running it is because he only gets grade 3, which you run 4 of in that deck, so you're going to whip with him a lot. But the fact that you could still search out Chrono Jet, I guess you do want to max it out. That said, if we take these out, there are a couple of options. First of all, is Baron Rover as your stride fodder. Uh, you could do Wedge Move too, but he helps you with your whole discard mentality. In addition to Mesa Gear, who kind of functions as his role, however, instead of giving me a draw phase, this gives you more spot removal at the cost of Soul Blast. Once again, Soul Blasting a lot, which kind of sucks. And the final two text options being Retroax Dragon or Steam Fighter is blah 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 blah. This boy had giving you more spot removal, just like Mesa Gear, but the cart this cost of discarding anything instead of Soul Blasting. And Retroax lets you essentially recycle your grade 2s so you can get back your smoke gears to stride easily or your ear cops to drive check more. So that was version 1.0 of the standard Gear Chronicle Chrono Jet Next Stage deck. As always, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Yeah, that's what we're doing.
Comment, rate, subscribe. Done. Let me know how you guys like the style of more analytical deck review, where instead of just going over all the card effects, we kind of go over how the synergy works together and some different options that you could place out in the future, I guess. And yeah, I'll keep you guys updated probably in the next few weeks with version 2.0. But until next time, always embrace the infinite.